everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Oh man, it's Tuesday. Another week. We're already in the throw of things, moving, fighting, uh, pressing towards the things that we consider to be important in our lives to produce the outcomes that are meaningful to us. Uh, once again, I want to remind you that no matter where you are right now, if it doesn't look the way you want it to look, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Uh, with that being said, uh, you know the routine. If you like what you see in here on this channel, definitely click the like button, uh, click the share button, um, and subscribe. If you are a person who has followed the work that I have done since I've been on social media for almost 15 years and the work I did for 15 before that, uh, and you know the importance of that work in the community and in domestic violence and human trafficking and mental health issues and advocacy uh, for our children, the public education system, uh, black men lead, lead rite of passage initiative and so much more. Uh, we need your support. Look in the description box and see how you can give and follow suit. Look, uh, this is a very touchy subject, and I'm not going to pull punches. I am going to be careful with my words uh, because they love snatching channels. Yeah, I've been through that already. Look, um, but I'm going to speak the truth, uh, but I'm going to be careful with my words. And to me, it's not hard because I've said this before. We live in a culture where disagreeing with someone is now tantamount to hatred it is the pressure to agree with people that you have no problem with outside of a particular situation or a particular idea or a particular philosophy concept or perception and agree with them or be considered someone who hates them um, and no one pushes this envelope harder and further than the LGBTQ community. Once again, I have no hatred towards anybody. I have people in my family who are a part of that community that I love dearly. I go to bat with and I deal with and talk with daily. Uh, people who are extremely close to me. I have friends that I love that are part of that community and they understand that I have a particular view and if they don't want me to speak on it, I won't. But if you ask me, I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to love you because there are things that other people will not agree with me on and things that I do or have done in my life. This is part of life. You're not going to find a utopia where everybody agrees with everything you do. And if you are very passionate about it, sometimes you're going to do something that hardly nobody agrees with. But if you believe in it strongly enough, you stand on it and you do it and you live it. And it's your, your life, you live it. But sometimes the consequence of living a life you want to live is people don't agree with it. And people talk about it. And people express their opinions, which they are entitled to. But when it comes to the LGBT TQ community, that opinion becomes the marker for the designation of hatred or a, a foe. Now, being a member of the mental health profession and, and, and behavioral science profession, I understand that a phobia is literally a mental disorder uh, that's associated with an irrational fear of whatever's attached to that phobia. Arachnophobia is the fear of spiders. Uh, hydrophobia is the fear of water. On and on and on. You can go on and you can talk about these different phobias. Uh, to sit up and say I disagree with a certain lifestyle does not make me a phobe. Does not make me a hatred. And that's just the precursor to what I'm getting at. But here's the thing. In all of this live and let live thing, it's not good enough. It's okay, let me live and be who I am and accept me for who I am, okay? Now let me invade spaces that I simply don't fit into. And this goes to the, uh, the topic of the day, which is right now, white media, white mainstream media 
uh, and I don't want to say all of white mainstream media, but significant part of this white mainstream media is ripping uh, Coach Don Staley, who just won the Women's National Ta Championship uh, for a third time, uh, went undefeated this year, and they are ripping her. And a lot of people say it's because of the whole Caitlin Clark thing, uh, uh, but I think it's extremely more intensely uh, targeted and specific than simply that. Uh, I'm not saying that that isn't a part of it, but I want to say we have to be deeper and move past our emotions. Yeah, the racial divide definitely got us on that one. And it just revealed that this post-racial uh, narrative that's constantly pushed is bull crap. Uh, that was, that, the cheering sections were so uh, divided along racial lines, it was r ridiculous, actually. You couldn't enjoy a great sports event for the tension in the room. Uh, and I was in a room with a room full of black people, but just the tension of that focus is crazy. But anyway, um, here's the thing. She's being attacked because she was asked by a white uh, female reporter in an interview that had absolutely nothing to freaking do with it. How does she feel about transgender women com competing in women's basketball? And it's putting her right on the spot where there is no right answer because if you speak your truth, if you, if you, if you speak your truth, then you're going to be targeted as a foe. You're going to be targeted as a hater. And you are possibly committing career suicide. This is how intense this agenda is. Um, you got to be very careful about what you say. Now, it's, it's, and it's, and I, I want to say that it's not directly due to, uh, anything that was on the table and it shouldn't have been a part of the discussion but it was right around the time that uh, the the Naya college body which is just like the NCAA but it manages more smaller colleges and it made a ruling that their policy is that transgender women women who were bi are, are, are biologically male will not be allowed to compete as women now, this has been an ongoing thing despite all of the science that's behind it and the obvious advantages given to such people in a sport. But, you know, it, so it was asked. And her response was, if a person believes that they are female or whatever, tell them to suit up, let them play. Something to that uh, stretch. I was actually watching this particular thing. Well, now she's getting hit by female, white female um, white female um, media uh, representatives that can't get the words I want to get out of my mouth because something's really pressing me. But, she, so she's, she's being hit because they're saying she had an opportunity of a lifetime to speak truth on that and to stand on the truth and what was right and she fumbled the ball. Uh, here's here, here's here's my take on it, and I'll only say it on this station because unless you're talking about Jason Whitlock, no white people show up on this channel. You say something about Jason Whitlock, they come for you, and they did, and oh well. And I'm gonna call call him out again next time he does some jackass stupid that negatively impacts my people. But hey, it is what it is. But I'm saying it because I'm talking to my people, and I need to be sure we understand the scope of what's going on here. So. What happens is she's asked this question and she's now being called out because she didn't stand on it and say that there is no place for biological men in women's sports, which should have been the direct point blank simple answer. Uh, this isn't about not caring about or not having empathy or understanding for people who are going through that transition. It's saying that there are simple biological advantages that you cannot deny that can be scientifically proven uh, and that this is not the place for it. Uh, if you want to have a place where transgender women compete in their own category, that's fine. But to sit up and do that, that would be wrong. That's the simple answer. But the problem is the smoke that comes with it. And it's for me, it's smoke. Worst thing could happen to me is I lose a channel. 
but I'm not spewing hate and I will sue this time. I will sue because I'm not spewing hate. I'm simply stating facts and I'm stating them from a position of care and concern. Here's, here's the thing though. The people, and, and, and I will say as a black man who stands firmly on this because I've spoken on this and this extends so much further out than uh, sports for me. There is an agenda in play. And I think trans uh, gendered uh, people are simply a mechanism and a pawn in a much stronger agenda. And it's sad, uh, but it is what it is in that sense. But here's the, here's the problem I have with the black people who are jumping on board uh, because they, they feel, and, and I, I heard it when I was saying it, and I was like, ah, I can't roll with that. But here's the thing. Was she simply rolling and saying what was popular or was she avoiding career suicide? Now, here's the thing that is the whole reason why I'm actually doing the video. We as black people have a tendency to demand of those we see in a position to represent us to demand things of them that we would never do ourselves. We will demand that she stand firmly on what's right, even if it costs her her four million a year contract as a coach, even if it costs her endorsements and her commercials that provides the lifestyle that she now lives that actually gives her the platform and that gives her the celebrity that we so worship in people, uh, the, you know, because it pulls that, if it puts that in jeopardy, we don't care. Go stand on it. You know, that just comes a time that you have to stand on the truth. But the bottom line is very few people are going to walk off their jobs because of uh, disproportionality in, 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 in opportunities, all the types of things that reflect racism in almost every corporation across the board. Nobody's getting up and saying, you know what, I'm not putting up with this tomorrow. This is some bull crap. I'm standing on my own. I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to create something on my own. I'm not going to go for it. Very few are doing it. And I'm telling you, as a person who has done it, this is what I would tell Don Staley. Don't you dare do it because they won't support you. They won't get behind you. They'll sit up and cheer you on until the emotional charge wears off of it and leave you out there by yourself trying to figure out what your next move is. That's what we do. We'll demand that somebody stand on business or whatever the hell we standing on right now. And then when we do it and we lose our clients or we lose our job or we lose our position and we get we come under attack and assault from external forces, it's like, oh wow. Nobody is sitting up building places and spaces and resources for the people that we are demanding to stand on squares on our behalf. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's sitting up. I've been talking about this for years, but we want the people that we look at to say the things that we want to say, but won't say. We want them to go out and take the risks we won't take to make the points we want to make, but are afraid to make and then get upset with them when they do it. So while I'm disappointed, that it happened, I understand it because nobody's gonna have my back when I make that stand. Now in a different room, in a different conversation, unfortunately, but when you don't have the power, that's the, th that's the thing that you have. When you don't have the power, you're stuck in a situation where sometimes you fold up. And then you got people like me that takes hits constantly because we're constantly saying what the other people won't say and to, in reaping the consequences and then your own people won't get behind you. The, the, you and, and it's over and over and over you see this. So again, the right answer is biological men, no matter what their choice or what their uh, selection is and how they want to identify does not belong, do not belong in sporting events, whether contact or non-contact with women who were born as females. And this 
has to be a means of protection, especially in contact sports like boxing and mixed martial arts and basketball and other things, but also in non-contact sports like track and field and so many other things. We have a responsibility to make common sense and, and error in the side of caution when the health of people are involved. I get, understand and respect people's right to be and decide and choose. That's their right, whether you think it's wrong, whether you think it's right, it's their right, but it should not infringe upon the natural progressions of anyone else. My life and my choices of how I live my life should not be affected by yours. Now, I, I mean, outside of saying I respect you and you can do what you want to do and you deserve respect and you deserve not to be hurt, harmed, mistreated or whatever, but to be pushed in. And I'll tell you why it's really common and it's easy to understand when you see transgender uh, injections into athletics, which is, the, which is what this is about. You always see it where the person who was born a biological male is injecting into a female sport, identifying as a female. You never see it the other way. You never see females who identify as men, and they're out there, identify as men trying to get into a male sport. There's no advantage to it. So it tells you by that alone that that is what's happening and it's an unfair practice and it can also be dangerous. I've seen somebody almost have their head beat, their eye beat out of their head in mixed martial arts by a, a female, by a transgender uh, person who was born biologically a male. Uh, it's just simple common sense of outside of the science. It's more than common sense, but it should be simple common sense when you look at it. It's just what you have to be willing to say. Now, I said it, but under the conditions in which it was pushed to her, she could have said no comment, but then that would have been construed and took the wrong way, which would have probably been, I probably would have said, I'm not up here to discuss that and kept it moving but she chose to kind of just throw it out there like sort of jokingly, you know, if she jump, jump out there, if that's what you want to do. But, you know, uh, we have so much on our shoulders, so much on our plate. Um, and we have to stop asking the few to shoulder the burden of the many when the many has no desire or willingness to step out there and be a landing spot when we get knocked down because we're standing up for the people. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here because I could talk about this in a bunch of different ways. And, uh, but I think that the point is clear that while I don't agree with what she said, I'm not going to drag her openly or in public because she said it, because I understand the entire dynamic and the vast majority of people who are demanding her to take a stand will not hold her up when she gets knocked down for taking it. And if I'm not willing to go to bat with you, I have no right to ask you to go to bat. That's the way it's gotta be and that's what we've gotta learn. We need to start standing up as a unit and then we will give the courage and the confidence to the ones who have the platforms to speak freely because they know no matter what you do to me, my people got me. That's not the case right now. That's not our reality, unfortunately. We aren't on code. Now, other races are on code, but we're not. So uh, that's my take on it. I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.